Did you know that there are five new guns available to play with in Battlefield 1? Well, there is. How do you get them? At the moment, there's only one way. You've got to pre-order Battlefield 5. Now, I'm not condoning pre-ordering that game or recommending that you do, but that's how you get these guns. So we're going to take a look at them and see if they're any good. They are all variants in one way or another of guns already in the game. So if you haven't pre-ordered, I don't really think that you're missing out on some insane overpowered gun that's behind a paywall, just to be clear on that. But let's take a look at them anyway. First up is the Fedorov Degcharev. This is a variant of the Fedorov Aftermath, which means that that particular gun now has three versions in BF1. This one, the Trench and the Optical. Vasily Degcharev was the apprentice of Vladimir Grigorievich, and between them, they produced a whole family of small arms based on the Fedorov receiver design. This particular version featured a rather large water-cooled barrel, and as you can see from in-game, it looks pretty different. Interestingly, Vasily Degcharev went on to be a well-known gunmaker in his own right, and if you play PUBG, you might be familiar with his work. The DP-28 is his weapon also known as the Degcharov machine gun. When I use this weapon in game, the one thing I noticed over the other two variants is the visual recoil. It feels as though the visual recoil is less and it's a bit easier to keep my aim on target. One thing that is quite noticeable though too is the hip fire. It's much worse than the trench variant as you would imagine and I'm not sure that I'd want to be at that disadvantage when playing aggressively as a medic. The upside is that it has a bipod, but in reality, how much are you going to be using that compared to how much you're going to utilise hipfire? I'm not sure the compromise is worth it. I personally think that I would still play with the trench version for the most part, although I do enjoy the optical version from time to time, but I'm not sure that this would be my go-to version of the gun. It does look very unique though. If I were you, I'd stick with the trench. Next up is the M1919 SMG. Don't do a double take, it's the Tommy gun the Thompson M1919, although interestingly, it's not called the Thompson here, although nor is the Annihilator. And it's also separate from the Annihilator, although they look remarkably similar, as you might expect. They are essentially the same weapon, but for whatever reason, the full name including Thompson isn't or can't be used. Maybe some copyright problems going on there. That being said, most people would easily be able to identify them as they are a very iconic looking design. The main difference you'll notice between this version and the Annihilator is the barrel. Compared to the Annihilator, the in-game stats are almost identical, except the hipfire is worse. But according to the description, it regains accuracy faster because of its low weight. It's actually pretty nice to use, and despite the fact that the hipfire stat in-game is far worse than the Annihilator, the hipfire on it is still pretty damn good. Let's be honest, those stats don't always seem to be that accurate anyway, at least in my experience. And the 1919 version here is the version of the gun that most closely resembles the later versions of the Tommy gun that would be used. Alongside World War II, of course, the New York City Police Department were the largest purchaser of the M1919, and after World War I, the weapon was officially renamed to the Thompson machine gun. And while other weapons had been developed with the same goals in mind, this was the first weapon to be labelled and marketed as a submachine gun. And of course, World War II ties into BF5 there. I don't need any more of an excuse to get my hands on a Tommy gun. Next up is the BAR M1918A2. Battlefield 1 already has the BAR M1918 Trench, Storm and Telescopic versions, but this particular BAR is a newer version. The version of the BAR we already had in the game was the initial version. As the name suggests, it was put into service in 1918, but it was designed the year before by John Browning. While the BAR was used during World War II extensively, it wasn't standard issue in the US Army until 1938. The BAR saw extensive use in the Korean War and in World War II. It then got phased out around the 1950s. The newest version that we get to play with the A2 wasn't actually around during the First World War at all. It's a far more modern version by comparison, and the A2 variant wasn't actually produced until 1938. And it came with a few features. It had a barrel-mounted bipod, pistol grip housing, as well as a rate of fire reducer. This is something that is available on this version of the weapon in game. Interesting, the other versions of the BAR allow you to pick between fully auto and single fire, but this one, like its historical counterpart, is slightly different, and instead, it will allow you to pick from two different automatic modes. And I think that's a first in BF1. One is a slow firing 360 rounds per minute, or you can press the rate of fire button and it goes back up to 600. I guess the idea here is that 
you can have more controlled fire with the slower firing rate and then change it up to the faster RPM perhaps when in close combat. In reality this may have really worked well during the actual war because the A2 version of the BAR weighed 21 pounds and I imagine the kick from it especially when going fully automatic would have been pretty hard to control. When it comes to BF1 though I think you can get plenty of control with a faster rate of fire. When I was using it I felt as though that there wasn't a situation where I would have done better if I would have dropped the firing rate down. In fact, more of a disadvantage. It's a cool addition nonetheless, and it's one that wasn't even a prototype during the First World War. It wasn't even in the same decade. Now we know the next game is going to be World War II, I'm absolutely fine with that. It gives players more choice when it comes to how they want to play, which is what I'm all for. Honestly though, I think I would probably still go for the Storm version of the BAR as my first choice. Last up for the primary rifles at least is the Mosin Nagant M38 Carbine. There is already a Mosin Nagant rifle in the game in the form of the M91. The most notable change you will see over the M91 though is the length. The weapon itself is far shorter and that was intentional. It used the same cartridge as the other Mosin weapons but its length was shortened by 21.6 centimeters. The idea was to give the weapon to combat engineers, signal troops and other soldiers who would need to defend themselves from advancing troops but weren't necessarily on the front line. And I really like this gun in BF1. In fact I enjoy most of the carbine versions of weapons because there's something really fun about running around in BF1 with iron sighted rifles, unless that's just me. Countering a sniper with iron sights is very satisfying and it just feels really nice to get kills with. Out of all of the five new pre-order weapons added, this is definitely my favourite. The last weapon is actually a pistol, and you've seen it throughout this video as my sidearm of choice. It's the M1911A1. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking, hold on a second Jack, that looks exactly like the M1911 that we've already got in the game. And you'd be correct. In fact, it's very hard to see or feel any changes whatsoever. There is some in terms of the history of the weapon, but when you're actually using this pistol in game, honestly, it's pretty much identical. And if someone didn't tell you that you were using the A1 version, I don't think people would even notice. When it comes to the history of the weapon, it was actually designed in 1914. It had a wider front sight, a shortened trigger, different grip checkering, a shortened hammer spur, a longer grip and a few other changes. For the real life variant, I'm sure that these changes made a big difference, but in game, honestly, it's pretty much the same gun that you would have used already. The main difference being that it's got a really nice weapon skin on it. I actually went into a game and tried to notice if there was any difference in the 3D models of the gun. I personally couldn't see one, but the skin is a nice one, and so that's pretty much the only noticeable difference in my opinion. With that being said, some of these pre-order guns are cool, but I don't think that you're missing out on too much if you don't hit that purchase button just yet. The new Fedorov is pretty nice, and I have to admit I do like the M38 carbine, but honestly I'd still use one of the standard BAR versions, and if you unlock the Annihilator then you aren't going to miss the M1919 SMG all too much. When it comes to the M1911A1, well, it's pretty much the same as I just said, so no worries there. These are nice weapons to play around with, and if you're a bit of a completionist, I'm sure that you would want to get them. But if you remember, we did have a load of new weapon variants for free recently too, like the silenced Enfield, for example, which is a fantastic new addition to the game. But if you do like the look and sound of the new guns, then you can get them automatically without needing to unlock them by pre-ordering Battlefield 5. Again, I'm not condoning or recommending you to do that. And whilst we're on the subject of Battlefield 5, DICE have just added what they are calling the road to Battlefield 5 in Battlefield 1. Hmm, what is it exactly? Well, you may have noticed a few extra buttons in the BF1 menu here, and these will give you a list of daily tasks that will go toward earning various rewards. The available rewards unlock weekly and can be earned during that particular time period. Whilst I don't really care that much for the cosmetic options in BF1, I have to say that having daily tasks in the game has definitely piqued my interest to play it again, and it's something that I would love to have seen at the launch of the game. That wasn't the case, but we know that BF5 will have daily tasks in it. DICE also insinuated that at some point down the line, you'll be able to earn things for Battlefield 5 by completing assignments in Battlefield 1, which is kinda cool. And the rewards will be stuff like exclusive weapon skins, soldier sets and other cosmetic items as we approach the October launch of the game. And that's all for today folks, I hope you enjoyed this one, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give me a like, if you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.